Oh no, Mike has hit one of the finer points of core rope memory addressing, the parity wires. In fact, core rope memory is so complicated that even its inventors got it wrong. So we need to spool up the elevator music and try to explain that. We'll start with the part that everybody gets, the data wires. Let's say we have a modest 8 cores of memory representing addresses 0 to 7. We want to store a 16-bit word in each of these locations. For that, we are going to use 16 thin wires, one wire per bit. If a wire goes through a core, it's a one at that location. So right now, we made a rope with all ones at all addresses, reading FFFF everywhere in hexadecimal. Now let's kick a few wires off the cores. When a wire goes around a core, it represents a zero. So locations 0 and 1 now contain FF00, locations 2 and 3 contain FFF0, the four last locations are still FFFF. Note that the AGC designers would have used octal instead, so they would have read 177777. But hex is far easier to read, so I'll bend history a little bit. Anyhow, the data encoding principle is easy enough to follow. Obviously, we need a way to detect if a wire goes through a core or not, so we connect the two ends of each data wire to a sense amplifier. The sense amplifier is a very sensitive wire current detector. We demonstrated such a circuit in our previous videos. In the AGC, it was implemented with the very first analog IC ever, the very first integrated differential comparator. Now comes the tough bit. We need a way to interrogate each core individually, so we can differentiate between addresses. And that's where it gets complicated. Well, actually, there is a very simple way to do that, which you probably thought of already. Although that is not how the core rope memory works, let's look at it first. We just put a small excitation coil on each core and put an AC voltage in one of them when we want to read that core. Then if the core were made out of iron, for example, it would act as a transformer, with the excitation coil being the primary and the data wires going through the core counting as single turn secondaries. We'll get a small AC current induced on each data wire that goes through the core and when we sample our sense amplifiers, the bits should come out. This is a perfectly legit scheme, so much so that it has a name. It is called Transformer Read-Only Storage, or TROS. It was used by weird Soviet phone dialers and even IBM for their 360 computers. And even better, gleefully misused by Luke Mano Computer to make a genius drum machine. But transformer memory is bulky and the addressing scheme does not scale for large memories. The reason IBM and the Soviets used it was because TROS was cheap. So our Apollo core rope is not a transformer memory, nor are the cores made out of transformer iron. They are made of molybdenum permalloy, a very special magnetic material. Its properties are very similar to that of small ferrites used in traditional core memory. As we explained in our previous videos, ferrite cores are mini bistable magnets. Due to their very square magnetization curve, the so-called Schmoo plot, they always end up in a specific magnetic orientation. It's either a left-handed or a right-handed magnet, nothing in the middle. And moreover, it switches very abruptly from one orientation to the other. The change in magnetic orientation can simply be triggered by a short current pulse in a wire running through the core. The new magnetic orientation is retained after the pulse and is usually what is used for storing data bits in core memory. But not so in core rope memory. The data is already encoded in the data wire position. If the bistable cores are not used for data retention, then what are they used for? They are used for address decoding and reading, and this time using an addressing scheme that is scalable and uses almost no electronics because the cores themselves perform the binary calculation for address decoding. Before we go there, let me explain the reading part, which is straightforward. Let's assume that we are able to flip the magnetic orientation of one and only one core. We'll explain how we do that later, but for now, assume that we manage to have all cores in one magnetic orientation, which we'll call reset, except for a single core in the opposite magnetic orientation, which we'll call set. Now let's add one more wire to our setup, called the reset wire, going through all the cores. We then feed a strong current in the reset wire, it produces a magnetic field that is sufficient to flip all the cores back to their reset position. Well, that will do nothing to the cores that were already reset, but it will suddenly flip the magnetization of the single core that was set. And since abruptly changing magnetic fields induce current in wires, this will induce a corresponding current pulse in all the data wires that went through this one and only core. If we stroke the sense amplifiers just at the right time, we will catch the pulses and read memory location zero, all 16 bits at a time. But the Apollo engineers went further. Let's redraw our 16 data wires as one single bundle called a strand. Also, the bundle line is drawn going through the middle of all cores. Use your imagination to picture that some of the wires actually go around the cores, just as before. Now let's add another strand of 16 wires. Actually, a bunch more, we'll add 12. I can't draw them all, but you get a picture. Now let's use an electronic switch between the 16 sense amplifiers and our strands so we can connect the sense amps to any strand. Depending on the position of the switch, we can now choose to read one of the 12 strands. Nice trick! Each core can now store 12 words, which we can read all 16 bits at a time. That's a storage density of a whopping 192 bits per core. Each core now represents 12 memory addresses. The extra address bits will be controlling the strand selector switch. In the actual block 2 core rope, they had 512 cores, for a total of 512 cores times 12 strands times 16 bits, which makes our promised 12 kilobytes per module, an ocean of fixed memory. This 